We're, we're going to finish out the chapter 17 of Matthew. And this is a very <laughs> wisest passage of Scripture in here. Well, I come to these things sometimes. I wonder, I can see why you did it here for the purposes of not offending somebody. I understand that. But I wonder, and I'm going to ask you all, did you do your homework this week? Do you remember what your homework was? Romans chapter 7 through 8. And I hope you read that. Get your Bibles though. Matthew 17, verse 24. Stand with me if you will. We're going to read this together. And we're going to be as brief as God will let me be brief. Matthew 17, verse 24. When they came to Capernaum, those who collected the temple tax approached Peter and said, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he said. When he went to the house, Jesus spoke to him first. What do you think, Simon? From who do earthly kings collect tariffs or taxes? From their sons or from strangers? From strangers, he said. Then the sons are free, Jesus told him. But so we won't offend them. Go to the sea, cast in a fish hook, and take the first fish that you catch. When you open its mouth, you'll find a coin. Take it and give it to them for me and for you. Let's pray real quick. Father, thank you for your word and for what we're about to read too to go with it. We ask you to bless your word as all these testimonies have already done. You've put your words in your people's mouths tonight, Father. And God, we ask you to give me just a word of encouragement for them and a word of uh, exhortation to send them out. Encouraged, lifted up, and built up for whatever they may face this week. God, we pray if there's anybody here lost that you'll draw them to salvation. God, we thank you for your presence in this place and for what you're doing. God, you're amazing and good. And we praise you. And we're thankful to be a part of what you're doing. In Christ's name we pray. And amen. Now, you may be seated. May God bless his word. But in this short little passage of scripture, it's very oddly placed. Uh, why is it even in here? And when I studied over this and was asking, okay, how can I focus on this? Do I just need to read this and, and go on into the next chapter and, and, or go back and hook some other stuff with it? He, and, and more or less, without telling me bluntly, I got this, that's what he did. I got this. And as you share testimonies tonight, I'm, and God put it on my heart to give you homework last week, um, and I shared that again this past Thursday night at a funeral home. What I'm going to read to you in a moment. But to show you what this passage is talking about, are we strangers or are we children? Are we strangers or are we children? Now, Peter's asked about paying the temple tax. The temple tax for Jewish men, you had to pay it. It was, adult, it was two days' worth of wages, pretty much, that you had to pay as a Jewish man to the temple to fund the, minute, the work in the temple. It paid for the food, for the priest, paid for the sacrifices, and of that nature. Every male from 20 years old and upward had to pay that temple tax. So the, Jesus hadn't ignored it. Jesus hadn't forgotten to pay it. How do you tax God himself? Temple taxes, they paid the temple, was to be paid to God. You see? Jesus is God. He didn't need to pay the tax. The people pay, taking the tax should have gave him the money. Because God wasn't in that temple when Jesus was here on the earth. He was in the body of Jesus. That's where God was at. Peter says, yes, he pays the temple tax because Peter doesn't want Jesus' name blasphemed or, or taken in a bad way. So he goes home to where Jesus is at and he's going to ask him. Jesus catches him first. Jesus speaks to him first. Peter, what do you think, Simon? From who do earthly kings collect tariffs or taxes? From their sons or from strangers? Well, from strangers. Now, when you read that, you're thinking, okay, that don't make sense to me. This is better for us to understand it. And 
in, a, in, our United, in the United States, it really doesn't apply to us because even the president has to pay taxes. He has to turn in a uh, whatever, you know, 1040 whatever. He don't do a 1040 EZ, I can tell you that. He has to ten, t- turn in a big 1040 whatever. Everybody pays taxes. They're supposed to, right? In royalty, though, in royalty, who does the king tax? He taxes his citizens and whoever comes in to his country. That's who gets taxed. Not the royal family, though. They don't pay taxes. You know why? Because they're the royal family. They're exempt from it. That's what this passage is telling us. The sons are free. Even though it does go on to say, so we don't offend them. Peter, you go... Throw a hook in the sea. The first fish you catch, open its mouth, there's going to be a coin in there that's evidently worth enough to pay the tax for him and for Peter. Now, Peter was a fisherman. Peter fished with nets. But I, I guess he knew how to throw a hook in too. The first one he hit caught had the coin in there. You tell me how that happened. It's a miracle of God. Jesus was showing Peter, Peter, you are my child. You are free. I'm paying it for you. In essence, that's what the king does for his children. He pays for them. Now, flip over to Romans 8. God is, man, I'm telling you what, God knows what he's doing. In Romans 8, in verse number 12, So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh because if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Verse 14, for all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. Now, ladies, don't exclude yourself from that. That's just the way the wording uh, of the... The, the early scrolls, all the scrolls, it, it's written in a, a man-male aspect. But it means children. We're God's children. You did not, verse 15, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if God's children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified in him. Now we can go back to Peter's, the story with Peter there. Should Peter have first went to Jesus before making this claim that Jesus pays a temple tax? You can say maybe, yeah, maybe not. Obviously, Obviously, the one who was collecting the temple tax didn't know who Jesus was. For if the guy collecting the temple tax knew that Jesus was the Messiah, he wouldn't ask him for it. He would have have said, I need to give you the tax money instead. What he's teaching Peter, what he's teaching the other apostles who was there is what is our standing with God? Are we strangers looking in? Are we strangers Wondering what's happening over there? You ever drove by? You ever drove by some establishments? I remember having to take Esther down for soccer in Maryville uh, a year or so ago, and we'd go down that, this one road and, and and come out, and I saw this restaurant on the right side, and this was about you know ten in the morning, and there wasn't nothing there. And we came back about one o'clock, and I mean, there were so many cars there you could have couldn't stack nothing else in there. I'm going, what is going on in this place? What have they got going on in there? And I said, well, I know what. There's way too many cars for me to even stop to find out. And I kept on going. I had to do this two weeks in a row. I'm thinking, what in the world is happening there? Somebody thinks it's good, and they go there evidently for whatever they have to offer there. You ever drove by some places, though, and you wonder, there ain't no way I'm going to stop at that place. I don't, you know, that place looks like it's just a rat's nest, right? Then you meet somebody and says, man, the, they got the greatest stuff. You need to go check it out. I said, I ain't going in there. I ain't got nothing I want, you know? I look at it, I ain't going in there. 
We're not strangers looking up at heaven, wondering, I wonder what it's going to be like. I'm a child of the king who's waiting to see what it's going to be like. I'm not a stranger. I'm not an outcast. I'm no longer outside the covenants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because I've been adopted by the grace of God. I've been adopted by him. He has saved my soul, written my name in that book of life, and I easily call it someday and I will be with him. I'm not a stranger. I'm a child. That's my standing. That's your standing. We're not just citizens there, and I can't find anywhere in the Bible where it tells us that we'll pay taxes in heaven. Amen? Huh? Even though we're citizens of a, of a country, we're citizens of this country, the United States, we're also citizens of heaven. But there, there are no taxes. You know why? Because we're also the children of the kingdom. We're also the royal family. How do you understand? How do you believe that, Paul? I, it tells me right here in verse 14 or verse 15. You did not receive a spirit of slavery. I'm not a slave. I'm not a stranger. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption. Woo! By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are children, God's children. Amen? And if children... Also heirs. The heirs don't pay taxes. The heirs receive. The heirs get. Now don't get into your mind that God's going to die someday. Alex. He's not going to, neither is Jesus. He died one time and he rose from the dead and never died no more. We will reign with him. All. All that the Father has is ours. I wrote this down in my notes and didn't, didn't, I wonder now how it's going to apply, but I know now how it's going to apply. Children experience all of the Father. Children experience all that the Father has. Everything that the Father has, the children get to experience, to be a part of, someday maybe even to possess in our life, right? But in heaven, all that the Father has to offer is ours already. All creation is, us, is for us to partake of. As children, we are heirs with Jesus, joint heirs, co-heirs with Christ. And then this passage wasn't what I was going to read tonight, but from the testimonies, it needs to be read. Since we understand that Jesus is God, he wasn't a stranger while he was here on the earth, he was still God, as we understand that our standing with God is not strangers, we're children too. As we understand that as children we get to experience all that the Father has, we're joint heirs with Christ. Look at the end of verse 17. If we're joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, we suffer with Him, so it may also be glorified with him. Several testimonies tonight were shared about sufferings. Some have lost loved ones to death. Some are watching their loved ones die. Some have gone through hard times. Some have struggled with their own health that are here. Some have struggled with other issues of life, with despair, with troubles, with trials. Verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. No suffering in this life, no suffering in this life can compare with the glory that we're going to see and experience when we get to the Father. Not as strangers, oh, but as children. At his children, you may have been knocked down, kicked after you got knocked down. You may have been stepped on, stood on, rolled over. You ever heard the, the statement, well, they just, you just threw him out of the bus, ran over him, and backed up over him again, right? You ever heard that statement? Yeah, you've been, you've been through it. Nothing you go through in this life will compare to the glory that you're going to see and be a part of when you get to heaven. 
That's the amazing thing of God's gift. The end of this chapter, verse 37, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Mm. Are we children or are we strangers? I know what I am and I know what most of you are too. We are children of the living God and it is all because of Him. All because of His glory. I wasn't born into the family of God. God adopted me into it. Remember when Paul was arrested? We've been studying about that in Acts. When Paul was, we're we'll getting to him. I'm sorry, we're not there yet, but we will. When Paul's arrested later on uh, by the Romans, in essence, he was rescued, quotation marks, rescued by the Romans from the Jews who were trying to kill him. And they, the Romans were about to interrogate him by whipping him. And Paul looked up to the guard who's about to whip him and says, Is it right for you to whip a Roman citizen without just cause and a trial? And the guy said, Uh oh, you're a Roman citizen? And he went and told his commander immediately what happened, what was about to happen. The commander comes to Paul, you're a Roman citizen? Paul says, yes. The Roman soldier told him, it, I, it came to me with a great cost. I had to pay, in essence, pay a lot of money to become a Roman citizen. Paul says, though, I was free born. Because I was born, Paul was born in Sicily, in a Roman Province. He was born into the, the nation of Rome. Just like you all, most of, most of all of you, were born here in the United States and you instantly became United States citizens, right? I wasn't born in the family of God. I was like the Roman citizen, the Roman soldier who had to buy his way into the, into the Roman citizenship. Guess what? I couldn't buy my way in. Jesus adopted me. Praise his living, holy amazing name. He adopted me. He chose me. He chose you to be to adopt into his family. Nothing we go through, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed in us. Amen. Because why? We're children. And when we're children, the Father stands up for us. Down in verse 26, in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. Mm. He don't do that for strangers. He does that for children. Praise His living, holy, amazing name. Are you children tonight? Are you still a stranger looking in at what's going on in there? <sighs> Don't be a stranger. God doesn't want you to be a stranger. He wants to make you your, his. He wants to make you his. He wants to adopt you if you've not been born again by the grace of God yet. And I, I love it. It closes out. Nothing can separate us. Nothing. From the love of God is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know why? Because we're children. Peter. I can see Jesus asking Peter, Peter, are you a son or are you a stranger? Well, I'm a son. Yeah, you are, Peter. You're a son only because of Jesus Christ. Where's your standing with God? I, from your, most of you from your testimony tonight, I know where your standing's at. You're because you're a child. You know it. You, you're not ashamed to tell people that you're a child of God. Don't ever be ashamed. Even if you're persecuted or suffer for it, keep telling people who you are, what you believe in, what he's done for you, and God will make them a child of his someday too, possibly. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for speaking to us. and Thank you for adjusting uh, because somebody or several somebodies were obedient tonight and sharing what you put on their heart. And God, you took your word and you just made it do what you needed to, and I praise you for that. Thank you for letting me be a small part of it. God, as we leave this place tonight in a few moments or, or whenever we get done here, go before us, go with us, go behind us. Remind us every day of who we are, that we are your child. 
and that we may suffer in this life, but the sufferings we go through will not be worthy, not even worth comparing, not even worth bringing up compared to what glory we're going to experience when we see you in heaven. Father, for those who may be here that are lost, who may watch this later that are lost, God, and they're, and they're suffering right now. They're destitute. Uh, they're homeless. Uh, they're living in sin. Uh, they're broken. God, you love them. God, you love them so much. That's why you sent Jesus, and you want to make them your child as well. You want to adopt them. God, draw them to you and save their souls. Father, we give you the praise and glory in all things. In Christ's name we pray, and amen. Let's get a song.